welcome to my series on poetry analysis this would be the second part of my analysis of T.S. Eliot's Wasteland in this video I'll be discussing the first part of T.S. Eliot's Wasteland titled The Burial of the Dead this title is directly taken from the order for the burial of the dead from the book of common prayers the book of common prayers is very a very important part of English cultural life and the Anglican Church of England it was commissioned by Queen Elizabeth I and later changes were made by King James I. The rite in the burial of the dead is supposed to take the dead man's soul to heaven, just like Christ who had ascended into heaven. But Eliot's burial of the dead does not offer such a promise. The modern man is supposed to go to hell. The title is also a reference to James Fraser's The Golden Bow where he talks about gods who died annually and rose again from dead every spring. Now let's look at the first lines of the poem. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. This is the direct parody of the first lines of Chaucer's prologue to the Canterbury Tales. When April with its sweet smelling showers has pierced the drought of March to the root. April is celebrated as the death of winter and the beginning of spring, the season of fertility. But for Eliot, it's the cruelest month because there's no hope for future fertility. Easter, Christ's resurrection day, generally falls on April. But in Eliot's wasteland, there's no scope for resurrection. According to legend, the Fisher King regains his potency and the fertility of his land during the coming of spring. Lilacs are symbols of fertility according to primitive myths, but here Eliot uses it ironically. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dead tubers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Sta Starnberger Sea with a shower of rain. We stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the Hofgarten and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Unlike other poets before him, Eliot sees hope in winter. These lines refer to a conversation T.S. Eliot had with Countess Mary Larish, the kinswoman of King Ludwig. It is believed that she believed in fortune telling by cards. Starnberger Sea is a famous lake resort near Munich. It is interesting to note that King Ludwig actually drowned in this lake while trying to escape imprisonment. Hofgarten is a German word for outdoor cave. When T.S. Eliot is supposed to have met Mary Larish, she is supposed to have said these German words verbatim. The English translation of the words are, I am not Russian at all. I come from Ludhiana, a pure German. You can find German obsession with racial purity in these lines. And when we were children, staying at the Archduke's, my cousins, he took me out on a sledge and I was frightened. He said, Mary, Mary, hold on tight. And down we went in the mountains. There you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. This is a representation of Mary's childhood experiences. Here, winter is actually glorified. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of the stony rubbish? This is a reference again to the loss of fertility. Son of man is a biblical reference. You cannot say, oh guess, for you know only a heap of broken images. Where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief and the dry stone no sound of water. The idea of broken image is taken from Ezekiel 6.6 6 of the Bible. Wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste and the high places demolished so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated, your idols smashed and ruined, your incense altars broken down and what you have made wiped out. This is actually a warning given by God 
to Israelites who worshipped false gods. The reference to the crickets is also from the Bible, Ecclesiastics 12 5. God prophesizes doom to all those people who worship false gods. The next lines are actually a parody of Eliot, Eliot's own poem, The Death of Saint Narcissus, which says, Come under the shadow of this grey rock. I will show you fear in a handful of dust is again a biblical reference. And the dust returned to the ground it came from, and the spirit returned to God who gave it. Ecclesiastics 12.7 The next lines in German are actually taken from Richard Wagner's musical drama Tristan and Isolate. Fresh wards the wind to the homeland of my Irish sweetheart. Where are you lingering? In the drama, Tristan is sent to Ireland to bring Isolate to be the bride of his uncle King Mark. But unfortunately, Tristan drinks a love potion and Tristan and Isolate are bound by eternal love. You gave me hyacinths first a year ago. They call me the hyacinth girl. Hyacinth is a symbol of resurrection in Greek mythology. Looking into the heart of the light, the silence. Again, we have a reference to the German play. Tristan and Isolate. Tristan lies dying, waiting for the arrival of the ship bearing Isolate. And that's when he says these lines, desolate and empty the sea. Once again, a reference to the emptiness of modern life. In the next stanza, we are introduced to Madame Sorceress, the fortune teller. Madame Sorceress is a mock Egyptian name suggested to Eliot by Sorceress, the sorcerer of Ekablatia in Odex Sassley's novel Chrome Yellow. To understand this stanza better, you must understand that fortune telling had been prohibited in London since 1824 Vagancy Act and punishable by three months hard labour. But the law has been in flux in years after the First World War. People are desperate to know if their future is good. This shows the fall of both Enlightenment and Christian culture. You also should note the fact that the first commandment in the Ten Commandments says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So going after fortune tellers are traditionally considered to be a violation of the first commandment of the Bible. It is irony here that a fortune teller is called the wisest woman in Europe. The fact that Madame Sositrus has a bad cold also tells us that she is powerless against the flu. The Phoenician sailor who is introduced later also is actually plebe as the Smyrna merchant, Mr. Eugenius, have the same symbolic character and they are related to Shakespeare's play The Tempest. In the Tempest, Ariel's song to the shipwrecked Ferdinand is about the drowning Ferdinand's father, Alonso. From Act 1, Scene 2 of the play Tempest. Full fandom fie thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. A Phoenician sailor also refers to a fertility god whose image is thrown into the sea every summer and recovered in spring. Again a symbol for resurrection. Belladonna here is a drug. Belladonna means beautiful woman in Italian. Belladonna is a drug which women wore during Victorian era to dilate their pupils so their eyes looked very beautiful. Later it was found that this drops actually caused blindness. T.S. Eliot was no feminist. He criticized modern women in many parts of Wasteland. Lady of the Rocks refers to the famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci titled Madonna of the Rocks. Here it's used as a parody since in the wasteland you cannot find a virgin. In the very next line you find the lady of situations or a loose or promiscuous woman. The L in lady here is in small letters. The man with three staves refers to the fisher king. In tarot cards, wheel of fortune is an important card. The god Anubis, the Egyptian funeral deity with jackal head represents good and Typhius, the giant of Greek mythology, represents evil. The one-eyed merchant represents crookedness. He also represents certain primitive fertility cults. The blank card is actually not there in the original tarot cards. It's Eliot's own creation. 
The hanged man is one of the important tarot cards. It represents a sacrificing god or even a phrases hanged god, a god who sacrifices himself to restore the fertility of the land. In some ways, the hanged man is similar to Jesus Christ. The next stanza reads, Unreal city, under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge, so many, I had not thought of death that had undone so many. The Unreal City is actually a reference to the poem titled The Seven Old Men from Charles Baldurais, The Flowers of Evil. The poem dedicated to Victor Hugo actually talks about the decadence of Paris. Eliot applies the same thing to London. The line so many refers to lines from Dante's Inferno Canto 3 in which Dante is introduced to the third circle of hell by Virgil. He is awed by the number of men who have entered hell. And he says, it would have never entered my head that there were so many men whom death had slain. King William Street is a street in London. This is how it looks today, but it would have looked like this during Eliot's time. St. Mary Woolnoth is a Anglican church in the corner of King William Street. So these are real places Eliot is referring to. Seston is actually a persona for Ezra Pound. The melee here refers to a naval battle fought during the First Punic War. Here there is a reference also to the First World War. So Eliot is implying the idea that all wars are won. In the next lines we have an allusion to the death and resurrection of the fertility god. Oh, keep the dog far hence is actually a dredge from Webster's White Devil. These are the original lines. These lines are sung by Cornelia while burying her own son who was murdered by his brother. The last lines of the first part actually borrowed from Baldurais' Flowers of Evil in his prologue titled To the Reader. He shocks the reader by directly addressing him, hypocrite reader, fellow man, my twin. He believes that both the writer and the reader suffers from a sense of unai. Baldurain here makes the reader conscious about the real world that's far away from the fantasies. By using the same lines, Eliot also shocks the reader from his or her comfort zone. In my next video, I'll be talking about the second part of Eliot's Wasteland. By the way, like and subscribe to Denver's Point of View YouTube channel.